I'm going to fix this controller. I actually already have fixed it. This joystick here was broken. That wouldn't recenter. So I fixed this and I'm going to show you how to do it. Stick around. So I've been asked to fix this Xbox for Windows controller. As you can see this joystick here is not really working correctly. It kind of wants to go back but basically it doesn't. It should be like this one apparently. I don't know. I don't use gaming stuff. I'm not a gamer. This needs fixing, so we're going to pull this thing apart and see what we can find. See if I can identify what's wrong with it. Might be able to fix it, might not. Let's give it a go. So it looks like it's got some kind of security hex screws in there. So let's firstly see if we can even get the screws out. So I've got my iFixit kit here, see what this has got. This has probably got something to suit this. There you go, that one goes in. But can I get to those ones? Ooh, oh yes, just I can just get to that one as well. So that's great. So I can get the screws out. That's a good first step. Thank you much. I fix it for supplying to me at no cost. I sent this to me a while ago. Been a very handy thing to have. As evidenced. It's a really nice set. So oh, I can't get that screw though. That one could be a problem. We'll figure that out. There's usually a way around it. I don't think we need to worry about the warranty seal, do we? We'll get all the screws we can, then we'll worry about the last two. I might have another screwdriver which will actually fit in there. This one doesn't quite do it. It's a shame. Always make one awkward one, don't they? So it looks like I'm rescued by the other screwdriver set from the iFixit. This other piece here, this other bit, also fits in this one. So, it's a deeper reach, and it gets down there, so that's sweet. Get this out. Is this the same as these ones? It might even be the same, it is. So I could probably use this one for the whole lot, actually. I'll swap over. But yeah, that's all the screws out now, so we'll get it apart in a second. Once that's all the screws out, got them in my the lid of the iFixit box, because that's nice and convenient. Now, let's open it up. Now, I've never seen inside one of these things before, so I don't actually know what I'm dealing with. Uh, it could be interesting. So, which side comes off which? Okay, bottom side comes off the top. Alright. It's no connector, it's directly wired. I'm quite surprised by that. I thought they'd put a connector on there to make it easier to change your cable, but no, well. Wire colours, in case it ever matters to you. Red for VDD, D- is white, D- plus is green, and VSS is black. So if this ever breaks off on you for some reason, or gets yanked and it gets ripped out, it's white colours to hook them back up again. Nice and easy. It's always helpful. So right, let's just lift the board out and see what's underneath it. Because obviously these joysticks have got to come out. And there's the motors. Okay. So this is the joystick assembly, and that is really just a complete unit. Okay. Okay, let's see if I can get the shaft off here without breaking anything. Maybe get a better look. Here we go. There's the shaft off. I don't actually see what is causing the springiness. There's probably a spring or something behind that shaft going onto the back bottom there, it's probably like a leveraged spring. I can kind of hear clicking here. So it seems to have some folded over tabs just here and inside there. Um, I if maybe I can fold those back over and that would help me to dismantle that part of it. It's not quite well better to find but that's okay, we'll work through it and see if we can fix it. As it is it doesn't work so can't get much worse. So there's that tab I'm talking about here which is bent over and there's another one inside there which you can't really see unless you get the camera at exactly the right angle and maybe just see it down there, where the white block is. So I said the white block denotes to bend it over. So I'll try and bend this straight and we'll see if I can get it right. Got my not so nice tweezers because I don't really care if I bend these because I can just straighten it back up again, it doesn't actually matter. Right, just that side. Now what I'm actually worried about is these wires breaking off, so I should make a note of this. So these wires here for the motors, black that side, red that side, this one red at the bottom, black on top. Just in case they fall off whilst I'm moving things around. Alright, so it looks like I can't lift this off without desoldering these tensiometers on the sides here because I can't actually disengage them. 
So I need to desolder these and take that off with it, which is not that big a deal, it's just a little bit awkward. So I'm going to have to desolder this, lift that side up a bit, desolder that one, lift this side up a bit and try and wiggle it between the two to get these off. A little bit of fun, but we'll get there. Alright, so I'll just pre-soldered this with some leaded solder, because that's what I use. Just to get it wetted originally, then we'll try and get underneath this corner here and lever it. And then put some pressure on that with my tweezers here, and then just do this and hopefully it will start lifting. There we go. I don't want to put too much pressure on, otherwise I could rip a pad off. That would be bad. Alright, so that's going as far as it's going to go there. Let's do this corner. And try and tip this one up. It looks like it's trying to lift the switch at the same time. It is. It's got a switch over here as well. I'm going to have to disable the switch as well. This is a bit awkward. They haven't made this very repairable, and that's probably intentional. So I've got to try and lift this switch. Right, I think that's off that one, that one is. So it's just this side which was soldered. Alright, so we'll come back over here. I know you guys don't have a great view. This is just to get it apart, see so if I can even fix it. Same amount of them, but possible. Alright, I've got too much solder in now. Let's try and get this off so I can separate it. My chucks are wicked in there. The solder iron doesn't do the job. No, there we go, that's separated. Now I should just be able to get this one off and that'll be it. Hopefully. There we go. That's off. So I'll clean these pads up stuff afterwards, but uh, for the time being, let's look at this thing. I might as well take the bottom off. So there's some more foldable tabs over here. So let's take these tabs here open. Let's bend these tabs here and open it up that way so let's open these bend them out, also you've got to bend all these back again when we put it back together no, it's moving slightly when I push it so let's just give us some help there we go right what's inside here? let's get closer before I lose the springs and stuff right. there you go, there is a spring in there So, why is this not working properly? It does have some kind of lubricant in there. Even this is fairly stiff. This pivoting is fairly stiff. So, I'm not sure. Maybe this is lubricating. Just to free this up a bit, because it's all a little bit stiff. So, I put some silicon lubricant in here. And all these joints. And inside here, and we'll see if that frees it up. And something else I could do is actually duplicate inside these these resistors. I do have some special uh, cleaner which will go into these and lubricate them at the same time. So I might spray a little bit in those as well just to help lubricate those. Let me grab that. This is meant for doing potentiometers and stuff like that, so it's actually meant for it. So it's not going to be doing them any harm. And it will get in there and give them a clean and also lubricate. The only problem is it comes out and goes everywhere. <laughs> Cut sprays way too much of that stuff, but that will help that part of it. Okay, so that's going to be lubricated enough. So despite lubricating it all, it's still not springing back like it's supposed to. It kind of does from that direction, and that direction, but top and bottom aren't really doing it. They're both sticking, so it's not doing what it's supposed to do. So let's push it back out again, and we'll try and get it to do something. <laughs> There'd be a reason for it, it's got to figure out exactly what it is. So it wasn't a lack of lubrication that's causing that. Okay, I might be onto something here. So it looks like this is a post in the centre here. I'll just push this post out. That is broken. So I am onto something. Okay, I'm pretty sure that this pin 
is supposed to be attached to the inside of this. There's like a little mark in the center there, which looks like that is where it used to go to. Can you see that little indent in the center, which is like it's not a clean surface, right in the middle. I believe that's what the post used to go to. So I believe that this end of the post has broken off of it. So I think it's supposed to be sitting inside here like that. And that's what's broken. Very interesting design. I'm not sure how I could possibly fix that, to be honest. Because you can't glue this stuff. This stuff can't be glued. So, some kind of polyolefin. And that means you can't glue it. Is it fixable? Uh, probably not. So, the only plan I've currently got is to try and replace that pin with a screw. All right, now, what I could actually do is cut the end of this screw off. Not too hard to do, they're fairly soft. So, you cut that off. And then what I could do is hold this, heat it up, get it really hot with the soldering iron, and then press it into this section and just heat it up and just melt that plastic around it and use that to try and hold it in place. That will probably work. How strong it's going to be? Yeah, I don't know. It's worth a shot because right now it's broken and there's no harm in giving it a go. Alright, so I've got my hot tweezers here. Well, these are basically soldering tweezers. I've got them holding onto this, I've got it screwed down so it's holding onto the screw. This is already heated up, it should be getting up there at least. It says it's 160 degrees C so it should be hot enough. This should probably melt about probably 190 to 200 degrees, it should be melting around then. So this, obviously you're going to be losing heat through the actual screw as well and contact surface area and all that sort of stuff so it needs to be a lot hotter. So let's just see if we can get this to melt into that piece. If it can melt in then I can just let go of it and we'll be good. So we'll get it in the center and hopefully it will actually melt in. There's no guarantees this will work. Yeah, it's definitely melting. But I've got to get it in the center. Okay, it's working. Can feel it going in. So what I need to do is loosen the screw off so I can let go. Here we go. That's in place. Now once it's actually cooled down, I'm going to cut this screw head off. And hopefully it will do the job. I mean, it's pushed in there a little bit, I don't know exactly how far. There you go, you can actually see it in there, in the shaft, there's a little black spot in there. That's how far down it's gone. You can see that black area. All right, you just see the lumps on the side. So that's where it's gone down to. It should be nice and strong. So that should be nice and strong. So all I've got to do is cut that... Uh, screw head off and we'll be good. There you go, there's a screw head cut off, there's a the head. Use some side cutters for that. So now it's got to uh, clean up the inside of it because I just touched it the iron a little bit and I was letting go of it. So I just touched it inside, it's got to clean up a little bit so the spring doesn't get fouled. And put it back together and it will probably work. Right, let's put this thing back together. So let's just uh, see what we can do here. So I'm going to lubricate this again because now I know where the lubrication should be. Definitely should be lubricating the bottom because I cleaned all that off and I was inspecting everything. So I'll stick some lubrication back in there. That's fine. Pop this bit back on. Now this shaft does need to be sliding around a little bit so I'm going to put some lubrication on that as well. So I cleaned all it up before as well when I was inspecting it. So re-lubricating. Really put the spring back on. Go on there. We shall pop this assembly back together so it goes that way around, like that. So, what I need to do is reinstall this into the housing over here first, the correct way around. Obviously, it won't work. So, it goes that way around, like that. Drop it through that adjustment into that adjustment there. There we go, it's in place. That should now be swinging like it's supposed to be. We shall drop this piece on top. Goes that way around, make sure the spring goes over, line all the corners up, and push it down. Right, moment of truth, does it work? Ish. Yes, it does. It's very stiff, but that works. Oh, it did work until just then. Well, the screw is, if 
affecting how much it can move. So it looks like that screw might be a bit too long, it's, it's just too stiff. So I think I need to reduce that a little bit, it's just too much for it. So yeah, it's just pushing it open. If I hold it down it'll, it'll work, it will actually work. It's a little bit too long. Yeah, I'm sure of that. It's a little bit too long. I'll cut it a little bit more off and it should be okay. Once right, so that's freed up a bit more, that now moves a bit more easily. So now it's going to now bend all these little tabs back over again. So we need something rigid we can use for that. I'm going to use my side cutters here. So fairly strong. And yeah. This one here. And this one here. Now if I can get onto these with some pliers and squeeze them down properly with pliers, then I'll do that, but I'm not sure I can get in there with them, it's a bit fine. So that might be all we have to do. That's as repaired as it's gonna get. All we've got to do now is put the thing back together. So I need to clean up all these legs on these components here, which I've desoldered, and on the board, and then we can uh, sit it back on the board again and try and get it flat. So I should just better wipe it with that, it'd be good enough. Just make sure there's no excess solder on there. So I did put a load on there to allow it to hold the heat as I was desoldering it. That's those. And the switch on the side looks fine. Let's do these ones. Clean these pads up so let's get some solder wick and clean up with that. Same for this one. This is generally easy to do if I put some flux down, but I really can't bother to be honest. <laughs> so those ones, and then we've got those ones for the switch over here as well, which also need to. See that one? That's that done. So I'll put some clean flux down just to help it to solder when I do it properly. Bit on those. Okay, so basically I'm going to put it down, fold all the legs over on this metal can which hold it in place, and then we'll solder the component legs down. And that should all be done then. So let's bend this over. Put that one there. And one that's under here. Which does lift up the ball just enough to get into it. It's convenient. And here we go, they hold it down. So I might actually, although it says not to worry about the other one, so I've only got two bent down. I'm going to bend them all down because it's probably not as good as it was originally from factory, so doing that is going to make it a little bit stronger. Okay. So that's that. Now we've got to solder these legs down. As so I put this in my vise to make it easier for myself, let's get soldering. So the flux is already there, so I've just got to solder them. Heaps of solder on the side tip. I just want it to flow up the legs onto the actual pads. I want it to flow quite a long way. So there we go, that's that side. Come on to this side. This is massive solder for this, but I've got loads of this solder, so I'm just trying to get rid of it to be honest. Right, solder on there. So those ones. Then we'll go around and do the switch legs on the other side. Now it's going to change to some different solder, which is a bit thinner. It doesn't need the flow as far because it's right here. Okay, that one. Do this one over here. And that is soldered. So now let's clean it all up and we're done. All right, let's put the joystick top back on again. Clicks, it moves, it springs back to the center. That's working. I'm happy with that. Excellent. Let's put it back in the casing. 
So we've got to flip it over, get these motors back in place, and hopefully it all goes back together nicely. We can hope anyway. <laughs> It goes like this. Right, that's all back in place. We have the cable, we need to make sure we thread that back in before we put the top cover back on. That should be sitting in here once it gets the top cover gland in place. Now, which way does it go? I think it's faced that way. So it goes that way up. We shall pop this over those. Gland will go back into the here, like that, and hopefully it all fits back together without any wires being trapped, etc. etc. Right, joysticks looking. That's fixed. Let's put the screws back in. One fits controller. This will probably get freed up over time. It wears in because that screws a bit of a tight fit in that hole that goes into in that little end piece. And I did try and loosen up slightly, but it's still got a bit wearing to go. So once that wears in place, that should be fine. But yeah, all good. Subscribe if you're not always subscribed. Click the bell icon to get notification about new videos. And like the video if you liked it. That's how to fix one of these controllers when the little piston thing's broken off. Wherever that's gone, I've lost it now. No. Get you later. So I've been asked. Oh, <laughs> that's a great start. <laughs>